All passion involves some level of pain over what you love. All passion involves some level of pain over what you love. And listen, pain, like fear, is nature's way of saying, pay attention. Let me say that again. Pain, just like fear, is nature's way of saying, pay attention. Whenever you are pained about something, uh, it is nature's way of saying, pay attention. When you get pained in your finances, you pay attention. You get pained in your body, you pay attention. You, let, you, you get a back pain, and your, uh, your back can go out on you, and it can cripple you with electrifying pain. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever had any, been down in their back? And you, you, you get into that place, it, it, will, it will just pain you. It, it'll say, pay attention to this. See, we ignore it until we can ignore the pain no longer. There's some, there's some of us men are notorious for that. You know, we, we try to sleep it off. You know, we, we, you know we, we, we're going to try to wait it out and see, you know, but, uh, give me, I mean, I'll, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. No, I'm good. I'm good. And then three days later, they find us nearly half dead. You know what I, you know, shallow breathing and stuff, you know. <laughs> we nearly got to be wheeling to a hospital, you know, almost in a coma, you know, because, <laughs> you know, we, we're going to be all right, you know, so. Because, but, but pain is something that says, pay attention. And whenever you have passion, it's going to involve pain over something that you love. And isn't it amazing that only the things that you really love have the capacity to even pain your life? Only what you love. When somebody messes with, with something that is your destiny, they mess with your calling, they mess with your assignment, they mess with your money. They mess with your children. They mess with your grandchildren. They are messing with something that you love, and it is causing you to pain, and it is saying, pay attention. And that's why God will let you become disturbed in your spirit. He will rob you of sleep. He will wake you up. You will sit up straight in the bed at 2.30 at 7 in the morning and look at the clock, and you'll wonder, what in the world is this about? And you can't even go to sleep, and the Holy Ghost is painting your spirit so you'll pay attention to something and start interceding to head off the work of the enemy and to cut him off because whenever the devil is up to something, God is up to something greater. But he needs an intercessor to pray that thing into manifestation in the earth because God is limited to our prayer about what he needs somebody in the earth to do. So he needs an intercessor to begin to pray that thing down into this realm as it is in heaven, so it shall be on the earth. And he begins to have us to begin to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He needs a window that understands what's going on up there so we can pull the reality of the heaven of what the finished work of Christ has already done. And you got to be passionate about that thing. Whenever God pains you about something, you're not just praying a cute little prayer. You begin to pray out of your spirit fervency. My God, this is what fervent prayer is about. When you have been touched, you don't want to play patty cake with the devil. You come with all tenacity that I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bring, I plead the blood, the blood. Oh my, you don't want to play with slew foot. My God, you come with passion. You come with passion in the name of Jesus, binding and loosing in Jesus' name. You have to take authority over stuff that's trying to mess up your peace and mess up your home and destroy your marriage. The devil is a liar. Something rises up in you in passion to say, not on my watch, not on my watch, not on my watch. And if something rises up in your spirit to say, devil, you've come a, a far enough. Enough is enough. You'll be stopped. Satan, the Lord rebukes you. The Lord rebukes you. And there is such an authority of Jesus Christ in your voice. It is not about how loud you speak, but it is the authority that you carry as a believer in Jesus' name that you can speak and even the winds will obey you. You can speak and living things will lay down and die and dead things will rise up and live. You can call forth those things that have been dormant in your life. And I'm telling you, when you begin to live with the passion of God, where he's looking for passionate believers, passionate prayers, passionate tithers, passionate believers that will share the, the, the gospel story, passionate witnesses, passionate worshipers. He's looking for a passionate people that are madly in love with him that says, God, I can't wait to see you again and to be able to feel the embrace of your hand upon my life. 
to have you God to caress me with your love and rock me in the cradle of your arms that I need a touch from you Jesus every now and then God because I'm passionately in love with you you mean the world to me and when you when you come to God and he's so looking for a passionate people a passionate people not people that have gotten lulled to sleep by the tradition of religion but people that have a living vibrant relationship where he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and you're walking with him through this life and realizing that there's a power in your walk with God that impacts your worship and your real victory is discovered in your daily walk with him in just living this passionate life that whatever your hand finds to do that you do it with your might have you found the thing that activates your passion that turns something loose where you lose track of time while you're doing it